in Jinwa Achebe's Things Fall Apart, readers and listeners meet the main character, Okonkwo, who grows up very concerned about being a man, probably because his father was such a loser. Okonkwo's most prominent internal conflict, the fear of failure and weakness, destroyed his life and has made him a cruel man. His uncontrollable anger is his another prominent flaw that keeps him away from true greatness. Things Fall Apart is a book that contains a tone of ideas, but three of big ones are manliness, tradition, and faith. Okonko is a wealthy and respected warrior of the Umafia clan, a lower Nigerian tribe that is part of a consortium of nine connected villages. He is haunted by the actions of Unoka, his cowardly and spendthrift father who died in disrepute, leaving many village debts unsettled. In response, Okonko became a clansman, warrior, farmer, and a family provider extraordinaire. He has a 12-year-old son named Ngoye who he finds lazy. Okonko worries that Ngoye will end up a failure like Unoka. In a settlement with a neighboring tribe, Omofia wins a virgin and a 15-year-old boy. Okonko takes charge of the boy Ikemafuna and finds an ideal son in him. Ngoye likewise forms a strong attachment to the newcomer. Despite his fondness for Ikemafuna and despite the fact that the boy begins to call him father, Okwanko does not let himself show any affection for him. During the week of peace, Okwanko accuses his youngest wife, Ajiyogo, of negligence. He severely beats her, breaking the peace of the sacred week. He makes some sacrifices to show his repentance, but he has shocked his community irreparably. Ikemafuna stays with Okonkwo's family for three years. Ngoye looks up to him as an older brother and much to Okonkwo's pleasure, develops a more masculine attitude. One day, the locusts come to Omofia. They will come every year for seven years before disappearing for another generation. The village excitedly collects them because they are good to eat when cooked. Ogbuefe Izudu, a respected village elder, informs Okonkwo in private that the oracle has said that Ikemafuna must be killed. He tells Okonkwo that because Ikemafuna calls him father, Okonkwo should not take part in the boy's death. Okonkwo lies to Ikemafuna, telling him that they must return him to his home village. Ngoye bursts into tears. As he walks with the men of Omofia, Ikemafuna thinks about seeing his mother. After several hours of walking, some of Okonkwo's clansmen attack the boy with machetes. Ikemofina runs to Okonkwo for help, but Okonkwo, who doesn't wish to look weak in front of his fellow tribesmen, cuts the boy down despite the oracle's admonishment. When Okonkwo returns home, Ngoya deduces that his friend is dead. Okonkwo sinks into a depression, neither able to sleep nor eat. He visits his friend Obiarika and begins to feel revived a bit. Okonko's daughter Ezinma falls ill, but she recovers after Okonko gathers leaves for her medicine. The death of Ogbuefe Ezudu is announced to the surrounding villages by the means of the ekwe, a musical instrument. Okonko feels guilty because the last time Ezudu visited him was to warn him against taking part in Ikemafuna's death. At Ogbuefe Ezudu's large and elaborate funeral, the men beat drums and fire their guns. Tragedy compounds upon itself when Ekonko's guns explodes and kills Egbuefe Ezudu's 16-year-old son. Because killing a clansman is a crime against the Earth Goddess, Okonko must take his family into exile for seven years in order to atone. He gathers his most valuable belongings and takes his family to his mother's natal village, Mbanta. The men from Egbuefe Ezudu's quarter burn Okonkwo's buildings and kill his animals to cleanse the village of his sin. Okonkwo's kinsmen, especially his uncle Ochendu, receive him warmly. They help him build a new compound of huts and lend him yum seeds to start a farm. Although he is bitterly disappointed at his misfortune, Okonkwo reconciles himself to life in his motherland. During the second year of Okonkwo's exile, Obiarika brings several bags of cowries that he has made by selling Ekonkwu's yams. 
Abierica plans to continue to do so until Aconquan returns to the village. Abierica also brings the bad news that Abam, another village, has been destroyed by the white man. Soon afterward, six missionaries travel to Embanta. Through an interpreter named Mr. Kiaga, the missionaries leader Mr. Brown speaks to the villagers. He tells them that their gods are false and that the worshipping more than one god is idolatrous. But the villagers do not understand how the Holy Trinity can be accepted as one god. Although his aim is to convert the residents of Omofia to Christianity, Mr. Brown does not allow his followers to antagonize the clan. Mr. Brown grows ill and is soon replaced by Reverend James Smith, an intolerant and strict man. The more zealous converts are relieved to be free and Mr. Brown's policy of restraint. One such convert, Enoch dares to unmask the Egbugwu during the annual ceremony to honor the Earth's deity, Enoch equivalent to killing an ancestral spirit. The next day, the Egbugwu burned Enoch's compound and Reverend Smith's church to the ground. The district commissioners is upset by the burning of the church and requests that the leaders of Omofia meet with him. Once they are gathered, however, the leaders are handcuffed and thrown in jail, where they suffer insults and physical abuse. After the prisoners are released, the clansmen hold a meeting during which five court messengers approach and order the clansmen to desist. Expecting his fellow clan members to join him in uprising, Akwanko kills their leader with his machete. When the crowd allows the other messengers to escape, Akwanko realizes that his clan is not willing to go to war. When the district commissioner arrives at Akwanko's compound, he finds that Akwanko has hanged himself. Obierica and his friends lead the commissioner to the body. Obierica explained that suicide is a grave sin, thus, according to custom, None of Okonko's clansmen may touch his body. Over the course of the novel, we see how things fall apart both before and after the arrival of the missionaries. Changes come about rapidly when the white men and missionaries arrived. Cultural changes seem to offer new status and recognition equalizing society. Okonko falls apart literally in the end. His power and status reduced to suicide. I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack. Born a rock star in this life, gonna live it up on the attack. Baby, I'm bad. I just wanna get caught up in this life. I'm crazy, I'm bad. Doing no cap. Only God wants you better go live it up. Cash in the bag, stadium pack. Baby, I'm bad. Yeah. Baby, I'm bad. I just wanna stay bad, stay mad, chip on my shoulder cause they treat me like an outcast. I ain't gonna take that, stay back. I'll be swinging on till the hits come in all caps. I ain't gonna lay back, pray that someone's gonna help me. Ain't nobody like that. I ain't gonna wait, that's all fact. Give me one shot and I'll never get the throne back. I'm sick of being cautious. I'ma go cause something, can't stop this. I'ma steal everybody's lane, call a shoplift. Sick of hearing everyone complain when they thought of this. Taste the pain, it's like candy canes It makes me go change into a better frame Into a better name, society's insane We all live for fame, yeah Cash in the bag, stadium pack Born a rock star in this life, gonna live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad, I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm mad, do it no cap Only God wants you, better go live it up Cash in the bag, stadium pack Baby, I'm bad, baby, I'm bad I got the
I'm bad I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm mad, do it no cap Only God wants you, better go live it up Cash in the bag, stadium pack Baby, I'm bad, baby, I'm bad I got